Cool, cool, cool. All right. So just want to say a massive thanks for everyone to uh for gathering around and hopping on. And um thanks to you very much to my my secret Santa, my my Linux Lewis of, of this uh secret platform that we're about to unveil. Um he's gonna give us the one two punch. Oh man, that's so bad. That's really bad. Anyway, my apologies. <laughs> um no, nothing. Okay, a few grins. There we go. Got something. Um, so thank you everyone for hopping on. Really, really appreciate it. Linux, um, thank you for making time to be here as well. This is going to be a lot of fun. You guys are going to get a ton of value out of this because not that I know too much, but I happen to know that Linux absolutely crushes it on this mystery platform, which we're about to unveil. But before we do unveil the goods, um, Linux, could you just give us a little bit of an overview? Who are you? Where are you from? How'd you get into all this stuff? What's what's the what's the ten four on your situation? Okay, Jamie, the ten four on my situation. So, the story begins in twenty twenty one. I graduated from law school, uh, and then quit the day I graduated because I realized I just hated the pathway that I was going down, and sort of zoomed out at what my life would look like over the next 40 or so years. And for, at least for me, it felt very predictable and quite frankly, depressing. And I started thinking about what I would do instead of following that pathway. And at the time, the answer to that question was to start a tutoring business. I thought, okay, what do I have some sort of specific knowledge in? And for me, that was helping uh, kids in their final year of high school in Australia, specifically Western Australia, Pass English so they could get into university. And long story short, I wanted to try and do it a bit differently and to make it more scalable. So I created an online course, 3,000 hours and $80,000 later, I basically ended up building an online course that nobody wanted. And that was my first foray into online business. And despite that being on paper, a huge failure, it taught me more than six years at law school did because it was real world experience. And that was something that I quite frankly, just did not get at law school. There was just so much theory, but I didn't feel like I was learning anything about the real world. And I know that that's, you know, what a job is meant to do. And I was, if I was to go and follow that pathway, but the point being, I knew that even though I'd spent a lot of time and money, I felt like that was actually my real degree. And I'd learned the most from that experience, the failure. So then just as I was starting to sort of transition to like the next phase of my online journey, this mystery platform came out and I just started writing on there because I'd been share like journaling my thoughts quite a lot throughout the last few years, but I'd gotten to the point where it felt like a bit of a waste to like just keep them to myself and not share them. And I thought, well, maybe one day I'll write memoirs and this is where all my thoughts can go. But one day is just some elusive point into the future. And I thought, well, why not now? And this mystery platform felt like a bit of a sign to start sharing those ideas. So that was in July last year. And then basically just started to get some traction on this platform, sharing my thoughts. And then created a newsletter. It was actually the first newsletter about the platform, basically just sharing my insights that I've been learning along the way. Uh, and then fast forward to today. So we're in September, 2024. It's been 14 months since I started writing there and I've uh, built up my audience to just over 7,000 now. And I started a, an online community based on helping people grow on that platform. And that's just past 830 members. And we've made it into the top 500 ranking on school, which is an online course, uh, sorry, online community platform. Okay. So that's been my experience in a nutshell. And I suppose it's probably a good time to mention what this mystery platform is, just yes. in case you haven't already realized it is threads. It is uh, basically Meta's version of uh, X or Twitter. And it's got a very like, clear link with Instagram, which makes it quite easy to sort of bring followers from Instagram over onto threads. But I started off my threads account with 17 followers from Instagram. So I think the sort of main point to take away there is that you don't need to have any following on Instagram to start a, a, like writing on threads and to actually see a lot of success. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
holy golly gosh do i have some questions my friend that is um <laughs> and i'm sure looking at the reactions around the audience i'm sure i'm not the only one but um I, and I, I sort of don't want to deviate the conversation too far away from from the topic at hand, but I, I do have to ask a, a course. I mean, how does how does a course set one back eighty grand? I'm not. I'm trying to do the math in my head here. Maybe I'm. I'm thinking oh, maybe yeah. I should raise my prices first and foremost if if that was you know mentorship as part of it. But anyway, yep. Uh, well, look, I one of my core values is transparency, and I think it's not very easy to find that online so in the name of transparency i will be completely honest with you um my mum she passed away in 2009 when i was 13 and she had inheritance she left me some some money and i thought that this was going to be the thing that i do to sort of continue my mum's mission of giving like she always believed in the importance of education so initially that was why I just went down the law field because I knew that that was, you know, traditionally a good form of education, but I ended up spending a lot of that inheritance creating the course and I was using the expenditure as a sort of way to justify like creating the best thing ever. But I realized that there's obviously more to online business than that. Like you can create a great product in your mind, but if it doesn't have product market fit, it's not a great product. Yeah. So to answer the question specifically, there was a lot of money spent on a marketing agency, creating a website. I basically cr tried to create my own online course and community platform like proprietary, uh, playing around with that Fiverr developers built like buying online courses to learn how to make online courses, just creating like every reason possible to basically delay having that real world face-to-face -face, like feedback direct feedback from the people who would be using the thing yeah so yeah. it just it was the worst example of like trying to do business because i learned from that that the mm. best way to do it is to fail quickly and cheaply and yes my experience <laughs> was the direct opposite yeah so you, you probably have a connection when you step into my world because I, I do a lot of my stuff through a, a crappy old Google Doc. And it's, you know, I, I think by contrast, you might go, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, anyways, look, um, sounds like it, it's been quite a quite a mission. And and uh, I, I really, really, truly admire the, the sort of introspection you have past that point because you're now kind of going, okay, well, look, it was a learning curve. And... Um, I think I think that is you know sometimes you get humbled by things. I, I know for myself I get humbled on an almost daily basis thanks to my lovely wife. But um, there is, you know you, business generally speaking is going to humble you. you have an idea, you have a, a, a hypothesis about something doesn't go according to plan. You internalize it, you make yourself feel like a bad person for a little while, and then you get over it and you kind of like okay, well it's not me, it's not my identity. I I, I didn't fail. It was just that that particular the thing didn't work out as anticipated, right? Which I think is really powerful sort of what I'm, I'm picking up the way you're uh, communicating there which is awesome um but anyway getting back on to sort of the reason why we're all here is so of all the platforms out there i mean and there's quite a few why threads like what what was the thing that made you go threads is my threads is my jam that is a great question i feel like it's the it's actually okay so many reasons to try and break it down it's low friction. Low friction, what do I mean by that? You, It's just writing. And writing is fundamentally, it's like the building block of every form of content that you see online. So you can take uh, like one post, like has one sentence in it, for instance, and that could be uh, repurposed into the script for a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post or a video that is a TikTok or an Instagram reel. And then if that Instagram reel uh, like does well, maybe that's a way to validate the idea and then to transform it into something more long form like on YouTube, or that could be the subject of a podcast episode. So why threads? It's text-based. You don't get penalized for posting a lot like you might do on Instagram, where if you posted say 10 times in one day, like the algorithm just starts to basically think, okay, what's this person doing? Just spamming their feed. Mm. But with 
with uh, threads, similar to Twitter, actually. It's kind of a quantity game and you can just post as much as you want. And the way I see it is that's all about feedback. Like you get really fast feedback through just posting something because the vanity metrics of likes, replies, uh, reposts, et cetera, are very easy ways to test ideas. So it's just a low friction way to go and post something. It's just words. You don't need to create images. You don't need to create videos. You don't need to have any production value. They're just words. And the way that the platform is created is it's quite friendly and it makes you feel like you're almost, when you're about to post something, it's not like you have that pressure of like hitting publish on a YouTube video where you've got all of that like overthinking going on. It's more like you're hitting send and about to text a friend. And that's just the way it feels. It, it's just very easy to post and it removes that friction. So I'd say that's the main thing from a marketing perspective. It does make it very easy to just test ideas. Yeah. And then you can go and if they're validated, go and uh, like expand on them in other longer formats. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's interesting. I've only been there for like, well, I've, I've created an account, call it a year or something ago, like when, when threads came about, I'm like, oh, what's this? I'll give it a shot. And then uh, I just sort of left it. I'm like, nah, you know what? I just, we were discussing off camera just before how when you start growing, one of the, the biggest things is staying focused. And so I was like, this is a distraction. What am I doing? Don't just, just don't do that. Don't get another thing that you don't you look at. Just just ignore it. And then it was about three weeks ago, and it was actually um, someone who's part of my newsletter. He said, "Oh man, threads is popping off." And I'm like, uh, "I don't really need another project right now." But I looked, and then all of a, all of a sudden, I'm like, "Oh, actually, this is really fun." And I, I found uh, um, I've used the term. It feels like a an outpouring, like a stream of consciousness. Like I don't need to think too hard and fast about the content. It's just like Shh, done. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, which is you know why I love it. Plus the, the reach is insane as well, which is kind of cool. Yes. Um so and, and I noticed one thing that was really interesting. So just for context, everyone, I I saw Lennox who's crushing it, and I'm like, oh, and he's you know Australian based. And I thought, oh, I'd love to get him on interview or like you know, somehow see if we can do a JV. I don't know, something like I just had an, an idea. And I was chasing him all around the internet. So I was like, hey man, set your DM. Like I was being a bit a bit brash, but I was like, hey man, set your DM. It's like, I don't know. And then I went to his Instagram, like, hey, hey, man, how's it going? Hey, hi, hi, hi. And he's like, oh, and then I, I think I, I found him on school. And then in school, he's like, yeah, I'm not on, 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 on Instagram at all. I'm like, oh, man, this guy is like. So anyway, whole point of me saying that is like, I, I kind of get the impression you've gone all in on threads. Is that A, a fair assumption? And can you talk through why that is the case versus, you know, diversifying a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you circled back to this because it's, we we're getting onto something before we started the, the recording. So yeah, Jamie, you're spot on. I, but it's basically my key focuses are actually it's one overarching focus, which is my school community. And that school community helps people basically grow on threads. And I'm just sort of sharing what I've learned along the way. And initially I was on multiple platforms. I was, on Instagram, I was on YouTube, I was on Twitter, uh, and then threads. And I was also doing like a podcast and a newsletter and school. And I was doing that basically every week for three or so months at the beginning of this year. And then I just, I burnt out and I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere with any of those different channels. And there's only so much one person can do in a week. Like we all have the same 24 hours in a day. So then I took a couple of weeks off and just reflected on like, I guess the trajectory and whether I was happy with the results I was getting and realized that if I wanted to achieve anything meaningful, I had to be brutal with how I spent my time and like basically delete a lot of my commitments in order to just do one or two things really well. So what I ended up doing was deleting Twitter, getting off Instagram, not just deleting the account, but more so just not being active there anymore. Uh, and not really prioritizing YouTube anymore. Not really doing like doing the podcast, making the newsletter a 20 hour 
week commitment, taking it from a 20 hour week commitment to a two hour week commitment. And then basically redirecting all of that time that was being spent on like the other platforms to threads and uh, building up my school community. And since I did that three months ago, like my audience on threads went from around 3,700 to just over 7,000 now. And the community has gone from 120 members to 830. And I purely put that down to the fact that I created time by deleting commitments and then redirected that time to those, like to that one main thing. And what Jamie and I were talking about before we started recording is just how, because there are so many different opportunities online that the the hardest thing to do is to just say no to most of them, almost like 99% of them, and to just pick that thing that you at least feel passionate about or can like you see some potential in. And it doesn't need to be the thing that's going to be forever, but you got to give at least one thing a crack to find out what you're interested in. So that is why... <laughs> Jamie found it hard to get through to me because he, uh, I said, basically, like, I'm I'm not on Instagram. If you want to contact me, you can come and join my school group for free. But that's basically it. So it's just like, you can come into my world and I'll do my absolute best to come and like help you. But I'm not going to like scatter my focus because if people are going to come to me and join my community, I want to give them the best like service possible. So that's where I was that's coming awesome. from with, with the with the focus and just the deleting and the simplifying from a um just on that one as well from a uh, a brand positioning standpoint it's actually extremely powerful because one of the things that happened throughout that that thing obviously i was joking before but there's something there's a, there's a little psychological thing which is pretty badass in here which is i had to i had to enter your frame in order to get what I wanted. I, all I was wanting just to like, hey, let's do a, do a thing. I'll see if I can you know, do an interview. I thought it'd help my audience and, and whatnot as well. And so, but it, you were like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go all the way over to Instagram on my phone to check the messages. You have to come to me. And it was like, obviously I'm joking, but like, but it's actually a really powerful frame. It's something that um, Dan Kennedy talks a, a lot about where it's like, well, how am I going to, like, if you want to work with Dan Kennedy, you got to go send him a fax. And he may get back to you within two to three weeks, depending on if his secretary can be bothered. And then if you really want to work with him, you've got to pay him a bunch of cash and go fly to his house in was it like Idaho or Ohio or somewhere like that. And into his ranch or whatever it is, right? And so it's that thing of like from a an authority basis, having those those strict guidelines of like, no, I don't check that. No, if you want me, then you gotta come over here. Um, which I I actually I was like, oh, this guy's playing hard to get but i kind of admired it i was like i like where you're heading with this man it's cool so yeah kudos for that really cool. <laughs> thank you and it's i think what i'm trying to get at here is eliminating the paradox of choice like there are so many choices in life everything like takeout you know where, where am i going to get food tonight um what am i what movie am i going to watch uh like what are we going to do this weekend what business am I going to start? What project, anything, what book am I going to read? The paradox of choice is just overwhelming and it leads to de decision fatigue and inaction. And I think if you can eliminate the choices to just a select few, you're going to be ahead of like 99% of people who don't take the effort to eliminate the choices we're we're about to i think the thread has just started to become unwound a little bit and we're about to go into something pretty dark but um that is, that's incredibly badass and and one thing just a, a comment on the side of that is like um uh, someone i was having an interaction online recently and someone was talking about uh procrastination overthinking and i said well the there's a little there's a little cure for such things and that is compressing down the time between ideation and action and if you can eliminate that whole thing in the middle, where it's like, I'll just give it a go, see what happens. And then like, if you, you start to build that momentum, crazy stuff starts happening because then you, you start to gain you know, more confidence in what you're doing. And then as a byproduct, you're like, well, I'm starting to kind of enjoy this a little bit now. And then you, it's easier to eliminate the, the distractions on the side. So that's, that's super powerful. Um, and I love the way you framed it, elimination, eliminating the paradox of choice. 
Golly gosh, that was say I can't steal that. I can't take credit for it. The Paradox of Choice is a book title uh, authored by, I think his name is Barry Schwartz. So it's a great book. And it just talks about two people. There are maximizers and satisficers. And satisficers, it's like satisfying or being satisfied. They're people who are basically content with just picking any option or not any option, picking one that's just good enough without going that extra mile to try and pick the perfect option because that's what maximizers do. They try and perfect every choice that they make. And basically the book says that maximizers end up being sadder people because they don't know what is enough. And the chase of perfection, basically it just like cripples them and it cripples their progress. And I found it really interesting. That's that's really fascinating. Um, I was just going to say, you were saying you're about to give credit. I said, no, don't, don't let you know, a good story get in the way of the truth, man. It's fine. Like, it's, it's all yours as far as we know. That's awesome. Um, no, just kidding. So um, awesome. So I, I'm kind of curious, like, what does your average day look like toward, towards, like, if you were aiming to grow, like, what do you, what are you kind of like the ninja stuff that you're doing to try and make that happen? I'll turn specifically. Yes. Okay. So maybe before we, before I answer that question, maybe the a good like preliminary point to address is like why threads? Like if if you're listening to this, why even bother having a look at it? Because you've just heard me talk about the importance of focus and just deleting everything. But here we are saying here's this like new opportunity. So yeah. why should you even entertain that idea after we've just spoken about like not doing saying yes to everything? So here's my answer to that. The Whenever a new platform comes out, and I, I read this in, um, it's like the the art and business of writing online. I think that's on, online writing. But whenever a new platform comes out, you have different stages. And I can't remember, this guy mentioned maybe six different stages, but the ones that really stood out to me were, there's before ads are introduced to the platform and there's after. Basically, the period before ads are introduced on the platform is when the actual platform itself will incentivize first movers with lots of reach and lots of growth. Because when you think about it, when ads are introduced onto a platform like Facebook, Instagram, whatever, the ratio of organic content to ad content you see is basically four to one, maybe three to one. So let's say you're scrolling on the feed, you might see three or four organic posts just from creators. And then the fourth one or the fifth one will be an ad. And that tends to be the rough ratio, like the sweet spot of organic to, to advertising content. When you think about that being introduced on a platform like Threads, everyone who does, like everyone who is on the platform now they're getting a like 15 to 20% boost in reach purely because there are no, there's no ads on the platform. So the point that I'm trying to make is it's a great time to at least just play around with it and see whether it's something worth experimenting and like continuing on because there are no ads on the platform yet. It'll be like that for at least another three months, maybe another six. And you've just got a first mover advantage still, even though it's like 14 months old, because there are no ads there yet. And I've seen lots of people, especially like in my community who have been able to get a, their first 1000 followers in 30 days. And I've never been able to do that anywhere else. And these people are just starting on social media for the first time. So in short, I would say it's worth at least just taking a look at because there are no ads there yet. And first movers are getting a like advantage in terms of reach. So I just wanted to put that out there because I think mm. it was important to like at least yeah, understand really the why. Powerful. Really yeah. powerful stuff. Thanks for, for clarifying that as well. But in terms of what like my day might look like, I still have a a full-time job um, and it's just in, it's like shift work. So it gives me some leeway to prioritize my my main online gig. And depending on when the shifts are, because it might be a morning shift or it might be a, like an evening shift. But basically throughout the day, I'll on threads at least, 
I'll post three times a day. Like it's very strategic. I've sort of created a pretty clear roadmap for how to like grow on the platform now. I'll post three times a day. A lot of the time on threads is actually spent engaging, replying to comments because it is, that's the way the, the platform works. But it's easy to think that that's takes a lot of time and it does, but you're actually just building connections with people. And I've had one-tenth of the people who follow me, over one-tenth, come into my community. And that one-tenth, so that there's 830 people in the community, uh, basically I'm leading them and helping them grow and giving them a pathway to eventually monetize. And that's what I'll like plan to help them with. So all of this just takes time, but that's the nature of online business, right? Mm. But in terms of like, yeah, the day I'll post three times a day, once in the morning, once in the middle of the day, once in the evening. And then I'll spend a lot of time hanging out with my community and just helping them as much as I can to grow. And then basically releasing new content into my community about how they can continue to basically create a business off of their threads audience and help them to yeah build their like one person business. So that's basically what each day would look like. It might be five hours. It might be like eight hours or so, depending on just what I'm doing, yeah. but that's it. Wow. That's incredible. So, so, and I, I love the, I love the dedication to that as well, because, um, and obviously you're, you're crossing your time between threads and, and your community as well, which I think is, is pretty cool. Um, for likes of myself and just for, for anyone that's interested, I, when I started taking it seriously, which, um, I'm only putting sort of two to five posts up per day. And I'm not really like some of them I'm sort of thinking about a little bit, but not really. A lot of them are just like, like I put a photo up of a koala, not a koala, what do you call them things that, Laffy birds, kookaburra, um, oh, yeah. and I and I made a joke and I said, um, you know, I said I like his feathers, and he just looked at me and laughed, and no one got my stupid joke. But anyway, my point being is that it doesn't like you don't need to think too hard and fast about the content because the the reality is about, and this is something I tell my students all the time, is that one piece of content isn't it's not the backbone of your business. It, it's one piece of a thousand other pieces that are going to assemble the, the jigsaw, right? And so. Typically, it's gone in a couple of days anyway out of the algorithm, so don't, don't stress about it. But what I've loved is I've only spent maybe like on, on a on a big day, maybe an hour on a, on a small day, probably you know 30 minutes, something like that, 20 or 30 minutes. So it's just like post, 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 and then reply to the comments and, and engage. And it's just like, as Lennox said, it's, it's basically about forming that community and creating that sense of familiarity. And, and in his case, obviously, cycling folks over to, to school, the, I'm – pretty sure you can have other goals. Like I've, I've just got my, my site there, which is effectively directing to my community, but um, you know, with a whole bunch of other random stuff on there as well. And um, yeah, I think there's options there, right? Like you need, you could probably even send them over to, to Instagram if you chose to and just have that as your, your kind of like pathway. Pretty sure. I've seen, yeah, there are, there are so many different paths and I'd be more than happy to speak to a bunch of them, like based on uh, what members of your community. Yeah. Uh, like the pathway that, a lot of them seem to be following and I could put out some, some suggestions if you'd yeah, find that useful. Do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what are, I, I know you've, you've got 5,300 members in, in your group. So mm -hmm. it's hard to to say that like everyone's doing this, but what is a, a, at least a pathway that you've noticed a lot of your members follow in this great online game? So, I mean, I have a proclivity slash biasness towards communities, generally speaking, right? That's kind of been my bread and butter since, I think I set my group up in like 2018 type stuff. And um, that's what I teach is basically build a, build a community full of amazing humans and help them out with some stuff and then sell them some stuff basically and um, to help them even more. And so I, I dare say most people in my world will probably be leading someone towards that um, community-based stuff. Uh, but I, I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone. Building it. So that, that's just me. That's how I, I teach and see a lot of students here so i'm assuming they all have groups but maybe not who knows i don't know what, what do you got for us i'm, I'm open to any ideas really. yeah well look it's funny because we i think we're all basically doing but not everyone but we're all uh wanting to build some sort of community online maybe that's a fair assumption for like most of us 
here on the call or in your in your group. And basically, to get pretty tactical with this, I create valuable posts on threads and then link my school community, just my online community, which is free, at the bottom of one. And depending on how valuable the post is, I'll generate maybe anywhere from a couple of new members from having a CTA at the bottom of that post to 50 or 100 if it's a, like a viral post. So the tactics of it is you build good connections on threads by posting valuable content and then you put a like CTA at the bottom of it to join your school community or join your Facebook group or XYZ. And that's just how it goes. And like, maybe it'd be useful for me to share my screen and just show an example of what all of this yeah, might look like, because be I think that's the, the easiest way to understand something is just to see it because yeah. words can only go so far. Should have access to so, screen. yep. Okay. Cool. Um, guys, just b before Lennox um, goes into the stuff, make sure you give him a follow and go join his community. I'll drop the uh, the link there below. So appreciate the shout out, Jamie. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Hopefully, you see threads <laughs> or something that. Yep. Yeah, okay, I think we can see. Cool. So here's you can have a pinned post this is basically like my profile and it's it's all pretty standard stuff you've got your profile picture you've got your bio you've got your link in bio and you've got a, a pinned post if you've been on x or twitter before this would sound pretty familiar but fundamentally it's uh it's just like any social media profile and this is a what we call like a long form post so as you can see here I'm just gonna get that out so, of the way. Lennox, just on that one, your your layout looks significantly different than mine. Is it, are you doing something <laughs> ninja with that? Have you been on threads on desktop before? I have, yeah. Oh. Mine's just like a, a singular thing, like a one. Interesting. No, so this is the. It's like I forget what they call it, but it's like the tile layout, and it was introduced a few months ago, where you can customize the way that your like oh, okay. uh, threads looks like on desktop. But anyway, I'm not uh, fancy. as you, yeah. <laughs> so, what what we see here on the left is just the feed. What we see here uh, on this column is my profile, and then here are my notifications, and then here's search, and then here's reach. So, well, talking about the reach and how you can get like a first mover advantage. Here, here's my insights over the last month: almost a hundred, almost a million impressions, eight hundred and twenty thousand impressions 114,000 of those are from followers and then 700,000 are from non-followers interactions growth over the last month so almost yeah a thousand followers over the last month almost most of the audience is from the United States age group gender etc so that sorry. those are the basic so, yeah, sorry Lenny, so like every time you say something I'm like oh, I've got more questions Get, sorry <laughs> just to confirm this was over the last like 30 days was it Last 30 days. Yeah. As you can see here from oh, September, right so 17th of August to 15th of September. Can I just say, can, can you ever see how freaking powerful this is? Now, obviously Linux is a few levels above us, right? So he's, he's been going at it a little while, but the, the whole point of this is to get 816,000 impressions is just absolutely insane. 20,000 interactions. That is just like, it blows my mind. Right, like we, I feel like we, I feel like ditching Facebook and everything else online and just going, Psh, all right, threads is it. Yeah. Is, so I, so I suppose with. it's all well and good for me to say 15, 20 minutes ago that the first mover advantage is there are no ads on this platform yet, so that you can, you've got a significant advantage to just get more reach. That's the theory. But Jamie, as you've just pointed out and like double clicked on, this is the proof. Mm. And yeah. Also, like, and the other one was yeah. the follower growth over the last month. That is, that yeah. is like freaking mental. Yep. I so can't over even the do last... the math on that. It's like, a, I don't even know what the percentage gain is, but that's that's massive. It is. So as I was saying earlier, and tying back to the focus thing, three, four months ago, the audience size was 3,800. And then 
since I just deleted a lot of commitments and then just started to really focus on how I can optimize threads, it's been a thousand followers a month for the last three months. So it's look the the I, the reasons to at least try it out are there, especially if you've got an Instagram account because you can basically just start your account on threads in seconds. It's it's so easy. Yeah. But anyway, as I was saying, so let's say you've got your account and then this is just what a typical, what a, like a, a long form post might look like. And just to make sure that everyone understands like what, what this means, a short form post is this. It's just one post and then people can uh, reply beneath it. Yeah. A long form post is this, where I'll start with a hook at the top and this is your your standard sort of marketing, I suppose. If you're going to create a headline, you want to pique the reader's curiosity so that they go on to read the next line and the next line and so on and so forth. Same thing on a long form post like this. Imagine this is your hook or your headline. And then I go into breaking down what the like threads 101 is. So I discuss why likes are important, why replies are important, what the difference is between reposts and quotes, what the difference between short form posts and long form posts are, what embedding a post means. And this is just, you can literally just embed a separate post I, as a little I, feature. I've noticed that you, you must have grabbed the links of like half a dozen of your like really valuable posts one time. And I'm like, man, this is super cool. So it's like just for context, everyone is just basically, as you're saying that he's just grabbed a, a former uh, thread that he's posted and then just had it as part of a part of a long form uh, thread. And it was just, I'm like, man, this is just now like a spider linking off into all sorts of stuff. It was really cool. Very quick aside, but what you've just touched on there, Jamie, is how you can sort of make your content on threads more evergreen or more long lasting rather than just uh, like fading into the abyss of your own feed. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Can I just... Uh, and um, then Please. So, sorry to sorry to cut you off there. Um, just as a question popped up, I just want to make sure it doesn't get lost in the weeds. Um, I'll just read it out for everyone that's watching the, the live as well. Um, so to use this uh, use this to pre-sell, sorry, use this as a pre-sales platform, as in you send them somewhere else, or do they then move uh into your school platform just trying to understand your expected end result from these great figures? Yeah. Uh, also, is it able to be integrated into a system so you don't miss replies? Like, is there any external yeah. tools and whatnot? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great question. Okay. So, what's the end game here? Basically, three step process threads, lead magnet, paid offer. If I was to simplify it as much as I can, it's that. So, if I scroll down to the bottom here, uh, like a little summary, and then I, I basically just plug my lead magnet which is the community because it's it's free and it's a no-brainer for anyone who's interested in what i have to offer because it's the sort of approach i'm taking with my my school community is give away for free what others charge thousands for and just build up a lot of goodwill if you know alex formosi i'm basically just copying his approach and that's the, the 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 process like give away lots of like valuable insights in some sort of long form post on threads then I'll include a CTA to join my community at the bottom of it. Then they'll come over to join the community. And the approach here is just to, again, help them achieve their goals. And then the third and final step is to basically have a paid community where your top members in your free one apply to join your paid one. And coming back to what you were talking about earlier, Jamie, how... Like it's about the frame and how instead of you selling them something, they're selling you to work with you. Yeah. And that's the, at least that's the approach that I'm taking. So yeah. hopefully that, sorry, I have, don't have the chat in front of me, but hopefully that answers uh, whoever asked the question. Hopefully that answer is helpful. Um, in terms of how to go about the like engagement third-party tools, at the moment, because Threads is fairly new, like 14 months old, there are a handful of different applications, third-party applications you can use to help you go through like 
engaging. One of them is called Black Twist, and that is just about to release an engagement feature where you can basically just like smash out the engagement almost like a game um, bit by bit by bit if you don't want to go and do it natively through threads itself. Um, I'm not sure if hopefully that answers your question. If you have um, links, if you've got any affiliate links or anything like that, feel free to drop them or, or distribute them out because um, it sounds like it's probably something that's going to be quite handy for folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metrical is the one that I use actually. It doesn't have okay. an engagement feature, but it's the best for just getting your analytics and to looking at your past posts that have performed well. And the best, like the reason why I recommend it is that it is free and you can get everything you need to know just based on uh, the free account. So oh, that's helpful. That's not a very good sign, <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh, well, that's that. I'm just going to leave that there. Obviously, the universe and Metrical doesn't want me to share um, what is in that account. But anyway, just, you get the a, idea. Another question just popped up. Do you know if it integrates with Go High Level? Ooh, great question. I have not used Go High Level before. So I don't know if it does. My short answer is I actually don't know. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sure I, don't, I don't want to go and um give you a, an answer from, there if I'm not too sure. I, I, I would imagine it would. I'm, I'm going to take a stab in the dark here and guess that it would because I, and my, my logic with this is they do have a social media management component where you can integrate a whole bunch of stuff. And given that it's a meta-based platform, I would suspect they probably have an integration. But... Don't quote me, I'm making stuff up on the fly. <laughs> um, well, okay, that's awesome. So just trying I, to am I still sharing my screen? I, you, you are, yeah. Okay. Are, are you meant to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was actually I was trying to stop sharing it, but now I feel like I'm not very good with Zoom. I can, I can. Oh wait. Here we go. Oh, oh yeah, can you? I've killed it for you. All right, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's really powerful. I really, really appreciate that. I was just wondering. Um, so it was sort of touch on content, but do you like do you do you bulk create content? Do you think about it in advance? Do you have any strategies as far as content creation goes? I do it on a on the day to day basis. Um, if I was more organized, I would bulk create it. But I can't quite put my finger on it. But there is something about creating it on the day and posting it on the day. And yeah. I hate to use the word energy, but it's the only word that comes to mind. Um, and it's I think that's what it is. It's just yeah. the energy behind sharing, like creating something on the day and sharing it. It has some sort of effect that I think is quite beneficial. And maybe the people who are reading it can also feel that. And if I was to actually delve into that even more, and particularly why that works on threads, the buzzword on threads is authenticity and just being being yourself. And I think that's why it's uh, been quite like popular for a lot of people because on other platforms, at least I felt as though there's almost this unspoken expectation to like perform or be someone you're not and to put a, a lot of effort into what you're putting out there. And it also almost creates this uh, other version of yourself. It's like a facade. But what is so good about threads is that you're basically rewarded for just being yourself and like sort of showing those weird idiosyncrasies and weird quirks that you have that make you unique. And I think that's what is really special about it. So in terms of how that translates over to like how I'll go and create content, the easiest way, and this is what I would highly recommend anyone who's interested in just starting off try, is you go and just have a scroll through the feed and go and give your two cents to what someone has said in their post. So in the case of this person, uh, he's actually a mate of mine, Haytham. Haytham has done extremely well on threads. He's actually gained 7,000 followers in the last month. And I've seen this wow. happen. It's been absolutely insane just through 
long form posts. Oh, here we go. 30 days, 9,000 new followers, 5 million views. And I've seen this. Jeez. What did he just 147. Like yeah. Viral post. Uh, wow. Not one viral post, like, like 10. <laughs> really? it's, honestly, absolutely, it's blown my mind. Blown my mind. I will show you. Like, look at just have a look at these statistics 4,000 likes, uh, 4.7. Look, this is two days. Two days ago, 4K. Can't two see days ago. Screen. Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah shit. Was, <laughs> thank you. I, thank I you. I killed Lisa. off the, uh, the screen sharing. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, I literally asked you to do that. We're all looking. Um, going, yeah. Where, where is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. And probably it's best for me to just leave it shared. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, Haytham, 21,000 followers. He has gained 5 million views, 147,000 likes, 13,000 reposts, 9,000 followers in the last 30 days. And this is because he's been sharing valuable long-form posts on threads so two days ago four thousand likes you can see the metrics there yourself yeah. same day 4.7 thousand likes just one day before that almost a thousand day before that 3.6k can you do you mind just pausing on on one of the big ones just for a second just want to yeah i'll go to the, the 4.7k oh actually that's a, a short form post um here we go Wow, interesting. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. So the, the call and sort of circling back to the question of how I will go about creating content on threads, still like an artist. And what I mean by that is like you might the the name, the phrase might sound familiar because it's the name of a book. But what I've learned as I've continued growing is that you just observe what people are doing that's working and then take that as a sort of template and apply it to your own experience. And that's basically like you could go and create something similar to this. And I'm sure you would see quite a bit of success with it. Like there was a, a lady in my community who actually I'll try and hopefully I can get her up. I can't remember her handle, but basically she is a vet and she was starting on thread and she just had one post where she introduced herself and she said like, Hey, I'm new to threads. I'm so excited to be here. I like, I'm a vet and I love like helping dogs. And, uh, this is sort of my mission. And if you can like, you know, point me in the right direction, I want to like follow some, you know, people who are also in the field, please just like share their profile or whatever. That was her first post on threads. There was sort of a formula there that I noticed someone else in my school community use, and he was a doctor. And he told me that he actually gained, this was his first post on threads and he gained 1300 followers from it. He went from zero to 1300 just in this one post. So then when Angela came along, I said, Angela, just go and follow. I think his name was Adrian. Adrian's like almost template that he used, she did. And she had the exact same experience where she gained like a thousand followers just from her very first post. And I mentioned that because you just basically look at what's working and you try to almost transform what's working and apply it to your own circumstances and share your own story. And I know that's quite abstract, but that's how... Like that, that's how I would do it in terms of the specifics. It's just sharing your thoughts as it's sharing your thoughts without really being like having a filter almost. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I've, um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I mean, I, I kind of really share my opinion for the most part anyway, but I found it. I'm like, there's certain things I'm like, I, I normally wouldn't 
I don't want to be combative with people, but also like if I see some bollocks happening, I'm like, oh, I just dis disagree with this. Not because I'm trying to create some weird little online argument. It's just that I'm quite happy about expressing an opinion. And it doesn't seem, what, what I found interesting is like, there's no malice coming from me. Like I'm not trying to like belittle anyone else and, and vice versa. When when there's responses, it's like, I disagree with that. Oh, okay, cool. Well, you know, let's, and, and sometimes it ends up with these quite healthy, constructive discussions about certain topics and, I, I would caution anyone not to get sucked into those, you know, online traps where you're just going back and forth. By the way, it, it usually doesn't end well. But on the other side of it, it is it, a type of platform where it is okay to express, and it is a friendly vibe, in my opinion. I don't think anyone's like, like even the folks that disagree with me. I don't think they're like really looking to kind of like belittle me necessarily. It's just like, hey, I don't agree with that. Ooh, why not? <laughs> type stuff. Yeah, it's. The the tagline of threads is say more. And I, yeah, I think what yeah. you just said said there, Jamie, is um proof of that. It's a place where you can have really great discussions with people and build a beautiful online community on a social media platform and then convert some of those true fans into your world off the platform. That's really if I could summarize the benefit of threads in a nutshell, that's what it is. Kind of like followers into fans into friends basically <laughs> exactly yeah um I, I love one of the things you talked about before is um and, and we're touching on some woo woo stuff here but you were talking about how content tends to lose its energy if if you're trying to schedule it out and i know for myself if i've scheduled content too far out it's like i've, I've had a thought about it now but by the time I've posted it, I'm not really even active in my audience when it posts because I'm sort of like maybe I'm on vacation or something like that. And so I, I fully agree with that. I think that if you are expressing something in real time and you're like, bang, post it, or you know, within a within a twelve hour schedule, whatever it is, right? Um, I think that's significantly more powerful. And I, I do believe that words, even though they're just you know pixels on a screen, I believe that that will transpose through. The screen if you have like that kind of fun excited energy about about writing stuff so it's kind of kind of powerful um every time i've had a thought in the moment and there's been this little piece of hesitation I'm like oh i don't you know maybe i shouldn't post this create excuses and like to, for just not doing taking risks and doing weird small things but and these aren't viral posts by any means, but they're just posts that have resonated enough with people and, you know, like 2,000 impressions, 74 likes. Like, I just had this thought in the moment and I was actually going to go and comment this on someone else's um, post. This is actually one of the biggest hacks is oftentimes when you're just going to go and re like add your two cents to someone's post, your comment actually is really good as a post itself. And then you just go and post it and mm. then you can get, you know, 2000 people to see your profile. Yeah. And those thoughts in the moment, just coming back to what you were saying, Jamie, those thoughts in the moment where you can just capture the idea and then just go and post it. That's what threads is great for because you can post dozens of those in a day. If you've got lots of thoughts and there's no harm done. Yeah. I, I like what you said before about how, from an algorithmic perspective, it doesn't compete, like your content doesn't compete. And I know with uh, both Facebook and Instagram, uh, Twitter's a little bit, or X is a little bit different, but if you put up, say, three to five posts a day, then the algorithm is going to compete with each one. And so what I love about threads is like, as Linux was saying before, you you can throw 20 up in a day. Why not? Like one an hour, 24, one, one every hour on the hour. Uh, um, and it's not going to compete with individual um, threads within the, the algorithm. So it's just, you know, fresh eyeballs, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> um, one thing I'm really curious on is, so I found that when I first jumped on, I had, I think I had 136 followers and I didn't really know what I was doing. I still don't really know what I'm doing, to be perfectly honest, but I've managed to grow to 462 followers as of, as of this morning. So we're talking about three-ish weeks, give or take minus a day or so of hospitalization and whatnot. And um, and maybe four or five days of me just doing almost nothing while I was just watching endless reruns of Sopranos and sleeping on the couch. It was 
I just finished watching. watching The Sopranos. I'll oh, just quickly put that out there. So good. Love it. This is yep. probably my third time watching it. It's just, yeah, so good. Brilliant. Um, uh, no, I lost my train of thought. Damn it. Sorry. I just That's had to say it, but <laughs> I've just okay. derailed you. Damn it. <laughs> oh, no. uh, that happens all so, the time. Yeah. Um, you were saying you've been posting and you've grown oh, to like 450 followers yeah, yeah, over the last sorry. three weeks. I was going to say, I, I noticed that. I, think, I noticed that I, I was following a lot of people and then they were following me back. And I'm wondering, is that a good strategy for growth or is it a crap strategy in the great scheme of things? Oh, right. Yeah. So short answer is yes. At the start, it, it has have a lot of your members in the community uh, like they're on social media. They're using, are they using social media in some shape or form? I hope so. To, to I build. Hope so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm pretty sure I know that like aiming to build an online business. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Yeah. Cool. Because, yeah, it's basically just a, an essential part of like any online business these days. But I just wanted to lay that groundwork. So at the start of any sort of social media journey, you don't have any credibility at all. And for better or worse, your follow account is a proxy for your authority and credibility. So if you if you see someone on, say, YouTube and they have 1.5 million subscribers, chances are you're going to be more likely to go and watch their video than you are to someone who has 10. So that's an extreme example, but it proves the point that followers are a proxy for authority, credibility, and trustworthiness. So based on that, when you're starting on a platform like Threads, Unless you're you've just imported, so if you've got like you know twenty thousand followers on Instagram, the way that Thread started is that you can start a Threads account, and whoever is following you also starts a Threads account. Will also follow you on Threads if that makes sense. So yeah. say yeah. you've got twenty thousand Instagram followers, and uh, a few percent of those also start on Threads. You start off with like maybe a thousand Threads followers, but for people who started at basically zero, like I did, you need to build up some sort of credibility. But because you don't really have that at the beginning, the highest leverage thing you can do to just basically get followers fast is just go and follow lots of people because it's sort of like uh, the principle of reciprocity in psychology. So if if I give you a birthday present, Jamie, and it's a really nice one, let's say it's like a a box set of Sopranos signed by James <laughs> Gandolfini 15 years ago. Wow. You probably feel like you like an obligation to reciprocate and to give me a really nice birthday present as well, because that's just human psychology. Like My it's just two weeks. well, <laughs> don't get any ideas. <laughs> so it's the same thing when you go and follow someone, obviously just on a much smaller scale. Yeah. And this applies yeah. to any social media platform, not just on threads. But just to use the Threads example, Jamie, let's say that like we hadn't connected on Threads yet, but I went and saw one of your posts and then I commented on it. And then I go and actually give you like some thoughtful replies to some of your, like to three of your latest posts. And they're not just a, a like template reply or just an emoji. It's like actually insightful. And it's they're showing you, my replies are showing you that like I put thought into these. And not only do I go and do that, but I actually go and follow you. From your perspective, you're probably thinking, I would probably, it'd probably be a bit like mean if I don't go and return a follow to this guy because he's just taking the time of, out of his day to give me some really thoughtful insights. Yeah. And this is probably someone I want to connect with. So I'm going to go and follow him too. Yeah. And if you kind of apply that little example to a lot of people, you get a lot of followers very quickly when you're starting at zero. Absolutely. I love that. Um, so uh, one of my, I'm going to call it my Bibles, is um, Robert Cialdini's... Um, oh. oh, this is embarrassing. Influence. No, influence, yeah, thank you. Well, I was like, yeah, I must be really committed to it. I can't even think of the bloody name. But um, that's, uh, I've got the audible version. I've got the hard copy, which I've given out uh, at the moment. Brilliant. Um, the, uh, the, the six principles of, of persuasion, which I've actually kind of evolved a little bit. I think there's actually eight, but... He often talks about reciprocity and how powerful it is and gives all these incredible examples of um, Jehovah's Witnesses at uh, JFK Airport back in the 70s giving out flowers and coins, all sorts of stuff. And it's, Prisoners it's of war. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in yeah. the Korean War, I think. That yeah, one was one. mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Getting them to write certain things down. I thought that was just yeah, unbelievable. Um and I think if everyone in marketing should study that book. It's just it's just unbelievable. Um and not easy to read either, I might add, but but it's just really cool. But um uh, funnily enough, it, so so most of my folks that are in my training and, and different programs and stuff like that uh, are predominantly on Facebook, I would imagine. And so the, the algorithm works the exact same way. You, you spend a little bit of time engaging with other users and then you get reciprocity in your favor. You also get more the way that I view it as like, I view it as like a topographical map. And every time you're putting a comment, it's like dotting a little flag on this map. So if your army of prospects is walking through, you're going to see more of your, your flags more or less, right? So that's really powerful. And it's kind of cool to see that, that other platforms operate in the same way, which is kind of cool. Um, totally agree. Yeah, it's it's like the the fundamentals of social media. I, I believe they're, they're universal. Like the some of the things that I've just said about threads, they apply anywhere. And especially on Facebook, like what I was talking about with a, a good hook, you need to have some way to hook the attention of the people that you're trying to speak to on Facebook yeah. if you want them to continue reading or continue watching or whatever. And if you can't cap, like hook their attention and grab their attention in the first sentence or so, then the rest of the post doesn't really matter because you've lost them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's that whole thing, you know, I think Russell Brunson's condensed it down to um, hook story offer, right? But there's this whole bunch yeah. of them, uh, ADA, attention, interest, I was going to say interest, deficit, association, <laughs> uh, um, uh, decision, action. And, you know, there's, there's other ones, pass, uh, problem, uh, agitate, solution, things like that. It's the same same sort of format. So they all do effectively the same thing, but it's that whole thing of the hook, the, the what's going to get folks to pay attention to go, Hello, I need to pay attention to that and you know consume the rest of it, right? Um, and it's, one of the things yeah. I, I talk to my students about a lot is um, you know creating a, a sense of authority, and I think you can do that through those things, either invoking curiosity or um, you know getting getting something so folks are like, I better take notice of what this person says, and hence reading the rest of your your content, things like that. Um, it's kind of cool. So one thing I, I kind of want to touch on, um, and this is. I'm about to open a, uh, the, the worm can a little bit here because it's just such a broad, massive, huge, most important topic as far as I'm concerned. But can you talk us through a little bit about the mindset that you have adopted and I guess that you would need in order to pursue any online business? But let, let's yeah. just go with threads given that that's the topic. Okay. Yeah, what a can in, of worms. In in one sentence. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A. <laughs> yeah, wow. Um, honestly, it would circle back to what we discussed at the start of the conversation about how every failure is a chance to get better. And I've come to believe that the quicker and cheaper that you fail, the better you end up. So that's that's one sort of tidbit is that in school and at least in university as well, failures, you know, that big fat F on the report paper or whatever, there's just such a taboo there. And that's the way like society has sort of almost trained us to look at failure. Like an F in a test is terrible. But in the online game, I can't think of anything being further from the truth. Think about it, an A-B test. You test two different things against one another. One of them needs to fail, be worse mm. than the winning one. And without actually looking at that failure, you don't know what the winning one is. Like that's, that's the online game in a nutshell. You yeah. need to fail to see what works and what doesn't. And that was the biggest mind shift, mindset shift for me was to realize that I need to get comfortable with the idea of failing. But unlike my first experience with the online course thing where that was an expensive and slow failure, I realized that the best way to do it is to do the complete opposite, which is to fail quickly and cheaply so that you don't have the emotional attachment to the failure. It's just, you're being objective. Mm -hmm. And the, the way that I sort of break this down into like a, uh, like 
into terms, basically, is you can be a content solicitor or you can be a content scientist. A content solicitor, <laughs> don't don't mind the fireworks. <laughs> <I've> got... <laughs> well timed. That was brilliant. Yeah. Um, a content solicitor is someone who's like going to argue their their perspective to the ends of the earth and they'll sort of win at all costs, even though that perspective might be a bad one. And I'd say that was how I was with my online course. I wanted to make that work at like, even if it would cost me $80,000 and 3000 hours. And that's not a very good way to go about it. But a content scientist, instead of being subjective, like a, uh, like a solicitor, the content scientist is objective. They're testing things. They, they don't have any sort of emotional attachment to what they're putting out there. Everything is just a test and the results will be useful. You're going to test your hypothesis and either your hypothesis will be proven or it won't be. And if it isn't, you just make a new hypothesis and keep testing. And oh, that yeah. relates to the bigger picture, which is what my biggest sort of mindset framework and like recommendation is, which is just this concept of the infinite game, which is what Simon Sinek writes about and uh, so many other people. But the infinite game, the whole point is not to win it, but to just keep playing it. it the, you win the game by playing it for as long as you can. And I liken online business to an infinite game because even though you can have, you know, like you can be lucrative and you can make so much money and you can uh, like meet the best people. I think the people who do best in this game are the ones who just like playing it and they don't stop playing it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, far out, you, you unpack some really powerful stuff there. And, and I think... One thing in particular that, that's resonated, um, and, and I'm sorry to, to bring this topic back to me just but for, for the sake of this particular part of the story, it, it'll make a little bit of sense. But um, many, many moons ago, I like I used to say to folks, oh, I failed for seven and a half years online, which uh, from tw 2011 through to 2019, like it was, a, it was a bit of a shit show, to be perfectly honest, and it was hard, and I went through bankruptcy and all sorts of stuff right and so but i used to say that i failed but and, and i used to wear this almost like a cloak like a, a cloak of i don't know something like i was punishing myself somehow like oh i'm a bad person because i failed like i'm gonna go to hell and then i started to learn after another two to three hundred thousand failures that i was like well it doesn't it's not me like i, I don't identify with that i'm not i am not a failure the the things that i've tried didn't work out as anticipated that's all and when i disassociated me from the identity of a failure like it actually changed my entire belief system because i'm like oh far out i don't I'm, I'm not a failure like i just tried a bunch of stuff but you know i'm surely that's got to be better than the folks that are sitting on the couch never trying anything right like surely right and so then i started to to detach that and i realized okay cool well, it's not i'm not a bad human being just because i tried something and it didn't work out as anticipated and so i think that's super powerful and i think if you guys can as lennox was saying if you can aim more towards the scientist element of it where you can view things objectively and go, okay, well, I've got this hypothesis. I'm going to throw an offer out there. Let's try it. Okay, well, I didn't get any bias. Why not? Offer sucks. You know, I didn't use the the timeless things like deadline and scarcity, right? I didn't I didn't frame it well enough leading into it. I didn't maybe bolster my own authority around being an expert in this particular topic before I made the offer. Like all these things you can fix and all, all can be fixed. And then when you get to that point, it just becomes fun. Cause you're like, Oh, I've got this concept. I'm going to throw it out there and see what happens. And you, you've auto automatically, before you even get to that point, you've let go of the outcome because you don't give a shit. It's like, cool. Well, that would be great. If I make a bunch of cash off it. Awesome. But you know, you never know. Maybe it's not going to work. Let's just find out if my idea is right. Um, so anyway, that was, that was super powerful. Imagine um, how powerful it is to think that you can't lose because the game doesn't end. Yeah. Yeah. Just like sit, sit with that. Cause most people will fail because they think there's a time limit and our only time limit is death when you think about it. But most people think that it needs to end before then for whatever reason, but if you can just find a way to stay in the game long enough to win, then it's not a matter of when. Sorry, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Yeah. Yep. Um, Alex Formosi says this uh, a lot, and uh, I'm pretty sure Gary V echoes similar sentiments and, and probably other you know 
people that know stuff as well. Um, but it's that thing of like, this game is actually so unbelievably easy. And I, I say that this game, I mean, whatever you choose to do, if you're selling stuff online, if you're building a business, if you're doing blah, blah, it's not that it's not that hard. It, it is basically knowing that most people are going to crap out because they they have the need for instant gratification. And they're just going to be like, oh, well, I didn't make a trillion dollars in five days. So this is all a scam, it's bullshit. And the folks that, that last, the folks that do get some stuff done, perhaps, you know, myself, like I've been doing this for, feels like a billion years at this point is because I've just stuck at it. Like, yeah, I've tried and I've failed a bunch of different stuff, but you know, I, I should have just stayed focused on one thing. I probably would be a trillionaire by now, but like, that's it. That you just keep going doing the same thing and that's it. You can't lose. Right. Like that's it. Like it's just an amazing when you think about it. We're all got oh, an unbelievable advantage. I completely agree. And it's, it's very, Oh, how do I say this? Because when I heard that initially, I think I had some resistance towards it. Like, what do you even know? It's like this, this shit's fucking hard. Like, <laughs> it like, is, it it, is hard. It's, but then I think it's, it's simple, but not easy. And, and that's the, like the distinction I draw. It's simple in the sense that you just keep doing it and you don't stop. And you'll get there but it's that's what like that's not necessarily easy because our human psychology is like yeah we want the instant gratification and we don't like failing and mm. it's like you have to push against all of those things but now i i do like i completely see where you're coming from jamie it's like that is what it's that it, like it's never been easier in terms of the opportunities available to us but again because there are so many it can make it really hard to try and pick the thing and just try and give it your best crack it is it is very very hard um we're going through this with my, my wife at the moment she's um got a business which has gone a little bit better than we anticipated and she's now that she's in the rabbit hole it's like oh, i could do this i could do that i could do that with this other thing what about this we can monetize like that and if i get onto tiktok whatever and it's just half the battle is having more hours in the day would be nice and then also just like maintaining that focus on the, the risk to reward as in as in uh okay well we could do that and it might make I don't know maybe a thousand bucks a month but we could do that and it makes 20 grand but like what's what's the, the best deployment of energy and time and, and other um resources along the way so um that's cool okay so any any tips on virality is there anything that you kind of like can sort of tap into that's like oh yeah this is how I would try to go viral if, if that is a goal for folks or yeah Absolutely. And it's actually um very helpful that oh, wait. Am I, I sharing killed, my screen I, still? I killed I killed the screen share because was... Okay. There you go. I got um, if we go there. back. So I, I shared a post on this just the other day, and the fact that I've already got it up is just very helpful. So I'll, I'll go through it. Um sharing screen. Hopefully okay. Can you see my threads again? Yes. So this is just your, your classic uh, like long form post that we're going over beforehand, but it also goes over basically, yeah, what like my sort of tactics for going viral. And this is not my own. This is actually something that I learned from Alex Hormozy and mm -hmm. I'll just go through it now and then we can explain the specifics of it after. So I started on, seven, uh, on threads with 17 followers, 1500 hours later, now I have almost that much 6943 here are the only three tactics you need to gain hundreds of followers while you sleep first one is proof and this one is why should i listen to you and if you answer that I, like as soon as possible you will 10x your reach and i say that because most people online are thinking subconsciously okay why should i listen to you because everyone and their dog can go and post something online but the biggest difference between that person and their dog and someone who has done something meaningful and can actually share really useful insights is the proof like that they've actually done the thing. So if you can share your proof as quickly as possible, Do, your, the likelihood of people believing what you're then going to say later is much greater. Do you mind if I just pause you there just really quickly? Sorry to cut your train of thought off. But no, not um, at all. just on that one, I think something that pops up for a lot of folks 
uh, in the earlier stages is like, yeah, but I've done nothing. Like, as in, it's that thing of like, yeah, well, how do I create proof, man? Like, um, I, I've got my own thoughts about it and, and I'm probably sick of me hearing them, but like, do you have any kind of sentiments about that at all? Absolutely. I do. Sorry. I, I, um, <laughs> it's it's spring, as you know, Jamie, here in the lab down, down under and my hay fever is oh, just terrible. WA would be going mental at the moment as well. Oh, it's not good. But anyway, I absolutely have some thoughts on that and that actually leads into this next one two ways to get proof if you don't have any if you think you don't have any the first way is to just borrow it so here is ah uh, where is it there's a really good example Bear with me for just a couple of seconds because I think it'll be really worthwhile just me sure. pulling this example up um, because it, it proves the point perfectly. While while Linux is doing that, you know, uh, for those of you that haven't heard me rattle on about this before, um, like we all have something to share that is of, of value to others. Like even if you're just like day one, you just figured out, you know, what affiliate market is, what online business is, all that type of stuff. There's still something that you know that someone else doesn't know. And as you're learning, it's about documenting what you're doing. And one of the things that I've done on threads just to, because I'm just intrigued by the whole platform is I've just gone day number three, here's how much I've grown. Day number 10, here's how much I've grown. But like, I'm literally just documenting what I've done along the way. And so now people are like, oh, well, that's cool. How have you done that? And it's like, I've created authority, not because of my, I've borrowed, like I have borrowed some of my, my brand stuff, but it's because of, I'm just documenting what I'm doing. Like, hey, I'm so excited. I've got a new inbound lead. I got an extra kind of went like kind of almost half micro viral and got like three likes this time. Yeah, go me. And so that there in, in itself, the documentation of your journey is going to attract people into it because people just love when you're you know heading in a direction. So that's my two cents on that. Yeah, I agree. Document, don't create. Classic Gary Vism. No, Gary borrowed that off me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic <laughs> Jamie, isn't it? Uh, no, kidding. Can you see this post with Mr. Beast on yes. my screen? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So this, when I was saying earlier about uh, what to do if you don't have proof, but you realize that it's very important for people to listen to you, you borrow it. And the perfect example of borrowing proof is this post. Notice how... This hook doesn't have, actually it has one thing, but I'll get to it in a second, but it's not saying anything really about like what I've achieved. All it's saying is what Mr. Beast has achieved. He's got 53 billion views on his content. I had to know how he did it. So I spent 47 hours studying his content and interviews. Turns out every video uses the same five and a half tactics, steal them to make your threads post go viral. And then this was probably my most successful long form post because it's it, awesome. Yeah. It pulled in like 300 followers and 50 new members into my community. And obviously the reach was pretty good as well. So I bring that up because coming back to how you get proof, study someone else who has proof and share what you learned. That's the first point. And it also relates to the second, which is share how hard you worked to get that information. So notice how in this Mr. Beast post, I said I spent 47 hours studying his content interviews because I did. Like I've listened and like watched a lot of stuff about Mr. Beast and how he has had the success he's had. So why not just share that to show that like I've really taken my time to like do this and I want to share it with you. So if you do those two things, you borrow proof and then you say like, and then earn it by showing, telling people how hard you work to get it. You don't need to be an expert in anything to do either of those two things. You literally just need to do some research online and all the information yeah. is there for you for free. Guys, can, can you appreciate how genius that is? Because in, in, in none of that, Linux has said, oh yeah, by the way, I need to have some crazy results. I mean, it, it does help if you do, by the way, but like it, it, you don't need it. That's, that's kind of the... the amazing thing about it so yeah genius well, thank you for sharing yeah oh you're welcome it's it's one of 
call it a hack because I, I honestly think it is. Like I've had, we were looking at one of these posts earlier. Like this is done very well. And I would say I have a lot of proof here, right? On threads. Mm. Like I've spent a ridiculous amount of time on this platform sharing, like just trying to figure out how it works. And I've shared like the most useful 98% in this interview but you could say there that like that's pretty clear proof that i have personally but the proof that i borrowed from mr beast was better in terms of what people thought of it so if anything what i'm trying to say is you probably like you don't need your own proof you're better off just going to borrow someone else's could i just give a little bit of praise uh one of my students might have been I feel I always get your name wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, started my Threads account and posted my first post since starting this interview. There you go. That's imperfect action. That's what I'm talking about. That is, yes. Money loves speed. I love that. <laughs> it does. No, congratulations. And um, yeah, go give me a follow. And then uh, just co comment on one of my posts saying like you, uh, you're in the interview or just something that I'll, I'll know that it was you because the handle isn't always uh, that clear to put two and two names together and i'll go and follow you but anyway um so that's the thing about proof and then we go to the next one which is plan all you're doing here is you're just saying like what are you going to do in this post and by the way these three things for virality it applies through every single social media platform you can apply them to anything this is not just for threads very important to know that but the second one is the plan so tell me what you're going to do in this post. Basically, you want to make the person feel like they have FOMO. They're going to have a fear of missing out if they don't go and continue reading, or watching, or listening. And an easy way to, or like a template to make that happen is have a number because numbers are a great way to catch people's attention. So not a number in words, like the word seven, S-E-V-E-N. Don't use the word seven, use the number seven because seven just gets people attention better for some reason. Uh, and then, so the, the template is like number and then topic, and then use the word lessons, tips, steps, tactics, mistakes, whatever. And then the example is for me, seven threads growth. Threads growth is the topic. Lost it. Threads growth is the topic. Mistakes. I wish I knew one year ago. And that's where I'm explaining the value. So you explain the plan and in the context of the Mr. Beast post that we're looking at just before, the plan is 5.5 tactics. So when someone reads that, they'll be thinking, okay, the plan in this post is to go through these 5.5 tactics. It's basically just saying a number in the, in the hook <laughs> to show you that like, this is what's going to happen in the post. So that's the second tactic. And then the third one, is the promise the promise is basically tell me what you're going to give me in return for my attention and coming back to our example i say the promise is you will make your threads post go viral if you read this post that's my promise to you so my promise in this post, which is it's like, it's very meta, but I said that you'll gain hundreds of followers in your sleep if you follow what I'm saying in this post. <laughs> so if you're still with me, that is how, I, how I've been basically growing on threads. And that's the, the most valuable thing that I've learned is to use those three tactics. Firstly, you tell me your, like why I should listen to you by giving me proof. You give me proof by borrowing it and or earning it. Secondly, you give me your plan. What are you going to do in this post? And the easiest way to tell me what your plan is, is just say like, here is number like seven things I wish I knew one year ago. And then the promise is tell me directly, don't be clever about it, just be clear. What am I going to get out of this by reading it? And if you can do those three things and then actually deliver those three things in the rest of the post, you will see a massive improvement in the quality of your content and the reach of it.
final tip, which is this, the cherry on top. And this is probably, I know I just said that like, this is the most valuable thing that I've learned that's helped me grow. It's relate. This is actually related to this is spend 80% of your effort on the first 20% of your post. What do I mean by that? This is only three sentences and it's extremely short. Out of everything I wrote in this whole post, I, like I probably spent an hour just tweaking that, maybe longer. And it sounds ridiculous, but honestly, I cannot emphasize this enough. If you can't hook them, there's no, people aren't going to go and read the rest of it. Like this is the most important thing that you can just try and tweak and perfect if there's anything, because it will literally determine how well your content does. And depending on the, like your setup of your business, if your social media content is like your form of lead generation, I would go as far to say that the quality of your hook determines the success of your business. Because if I can't hook people in this post, they're not going to make it to the bottom of it where they go into my free community. And if they don't go into my free community, I don't have any paid things to offer to anyone. That's, yeah, it's kind of as simple as that, at least for me and the way that like I've set up my online stuff. And notice how in this hook, I've actually used that three step process of proof I say, I've spent this much time and have this much of an audience. I have a plan, three tactics, and I have a promise, gain hundreds of followers. So not only can you use that those three tactics in a whole post, but you use them in the hook as well. Um, that is unbelievably powerful. And I've just oh. shared the link to that post in the chat so you don't need to have a threads account to go and view it and you can just go and like just copy and paste all of that and then just try and apply it to your own content that's amazing thank you so much all right so welcome um i feel like we've, we've like we've certainly harvested this garden haven't we like we've <laughs> we've got every little nugget out of it that we possibly can um I had a, I have like a page of questions, but I'm sort of I think we've gone over so much stuff. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But um, Lance, just on on a final note, um, just before we sort of wrap things up there, uh, anything else you'd like to add? Anything? Any kind of tips, advice? Anything to motivate the troops, so to speak? Mm. Never stop testing. It's all a test. Be a content scientist. Love it. Absolutely love it um awesome and what's the best way for us to reach out to you if we uh if we want to hang out move over to wa number one <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah number one move over to western australia number two need i say more uh, <laughs> <laughs> reds school community it's it's all free uh that's it that's incredible yeah. um Awesome, guys. I'll, I'll drop that link for the uh, school community. Obviously, hit up his uh, Threads account, give him a follow, like all the stuff. It's absolutely incredible. And um, look, Lennox, on behalf of obviously myself, anyone that's tuning into the live, anyone that's on the Zoom, massive, massive thank you so much for being here. Thank you for dropping nuggets. It's just been absolutely incredible. So really, really appreciate it. And I uh, appreciate you giving the time and value and knowledge. Um, what I'll do now is- it's Such um, a pleasure. I'll probably uh, wrap things up, but if anyone wants to jump on, if there's anything you'd like to ask, then it's just while we got them here. Um, hang yeah. off for time, and you, you're okay. Oh, with I've got I've got time for Q and A's, and absolutely sure. would love to answer any questions if anyone has any. I know that there's been a lot of like information <laughs> thrown in this conversation, I'm, so I'm still if in there's recovery anything mode. I can do to like simplify and just sort of give you like key action steps. I'm a big believer in action steps um i will do my best to help so please i also believe that there's no such thing as a stupid question so yeah uh every question is a good question in my eyes so please ask away if you've got anything absolutely um i will uh anyone that's registered i'll get a recording out to you guys as well and um 
yeah, I think it looks like I've streamed somewhere at least anyway, so that's cool. But uh, anyone want to hop on and ask any questions at all, or if you just want to type in, that's fine too. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. Matthew, I have a question. Oh, might have okay. Yeah, um, I have two, two Instagrams and two Facebook profiles, and uh, they each one is linked to each other. And I'm wondering, should I start? Should I should I post on two Threads account, or should I just simplify and keep it all in one account? Especially if Correct. I'm starting off yeah. with a different number of followers. Like I have one Instagram account I'm following. I'm starting with like zero. I have another Instagram account that's like maybe like 3000, but it's not related to my current business. And uh, yeah. And so I'm just wondering, like I literally just started my account while, while being on, on watching you guys. I just posted my first post and it's from an, a, an Instagram account with zero, like, like really no followers, like 20 followers. Is that, is that cool? Or should I start with two and just kind of experiment or what do you think? I think start with one, keep it really simple. Uh, and yeah, just do one because as I've said, and I, I don't want to, cause it's very easy for people to come and say, like they'll come and you know talk about their thing. And then they'll just say, this is the best opportunity ever. And you need to come and hop on it now. And that's it. I don't want to give you that impression and say like, it's, it's, uh, it's easy because everything meaningful involves like a lot of time. I don't think there's any other way to put it. So this platform would take a lot of time. But what I can say is if you sort of learn the ropes, that will give you, a. it will be a great investment of time and you'll get a high return on investment. That being said, you'll just achieve much more if you just focus on one account. And that's what I would do if I were you. Awesome. Thank you. You're so welcome. Matthew, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, yeah. Um, this has been great, by the way. I appreciate you coming on and Jamie, thanks for thanks for hosting this. Um so obviously you you plan these longer posts out quite a bit, even though you say you're you're kind of coming up with the content on the day when you post one of these longer posts like what you shared with us do you thread those all together at once or do you kind of drop feed them a little but yeah great question and i'm glad you you brought that up because jamie and i were talking earlier about like capturing the energy and just putting it out there very important to note that I will actually do that pretty much exclusively just for the shorter stuff. So for me, where are we? Go back. Yeah, so a shorter post. Anything that isn't multiple different threads in, in one post, I'll sort of like capture that energy. It might tweak it a little bit, but then put it out on the same day. But for one of the longer ones, that is actually, that like does, it's well, it's much more thought out. And it might be a little iterative process over a few days. But in saying that, to answer your question, what I'll do is... It's basically all at once. So I'll put my hook up there. Then, uh, like, you know, the next one there, next one there, next one there. Have a little CTA and then hit post. And and that yes, yeah, so I'll do it all at once. Yeah. Um, hopefully that answers your question. That makes sense because you got to keep that. The hook has to pay off. You can't just have the hook and then release, right? So they're exactly. hoping that they hope they come back and catch the rest of the thread. So when 100%. you're doing, yeah, that makes that makes total sense. Um, so you would do. Uh, like one of these long posts, how often a week versus, because I know you said you don't mind posting like three times a day. Would one of them be one of these long ones and then a couple of the short ones a day? Or do you kind of put a little bit more space in between the longer ones? Yeah. So absolute 
like best case scenario is you have just I call them a one liner. It doesn't it isn't strictly a one liner, but it's just something that's short, punchy, and concise. Something like this. I learned more in one month creating content than six years studying law. Learn by doing what you love. Because it's easy and it's an easy way to get like some some reach. And people can like a lot of people can see it and read it because it doesn't take a lot of effort. And it's just it's a repetition, right? You're just getting more reps in. Then your other one could be like a listicle, something like this, where again, it kind of looks nice and it's visually appealing and it's easy for people to read and it's not too hard to make. And then again, like this one's a better example. It's very easy to read and it just goes down the line. Then the third one, best case scenario is some sort of longer form post. If you can do that daily, you will grow incredibly fast. I promise you that. Because the amount of feedback that you're getting from those long form posts and all the other ones you're doing, just like more feedback, more learning, more learning, more growth on the platform. But obviously it becomes a matter of time because everyone's time is limited. So if you can do one long form post a day, like, yeah, that's that's a great recipe for success. For me personally, because it's funny, like you go and do any like you've got a, a business to run or you've got something else other than the social media itself. And obviously that other thing is the thing where most of your time should be. So because I've got the community, I don't often have the time to go and post like one long form thread a day. So it might be two to four a week. And that's where I'm at. However, okay. what I'm working towards and I'll try and bloody get this up and hopefully metrical doesn't have stage fright and actually work for me, but uh, what I'm working towards is creating a content library on uh, threads such that over time I can literally just go and f use metrical or some other third party software to go and give me my top performing posts over where are we over a year and then i can literally just go and repurpose them and like repost them and i have a whole year's worth of content that i can just go and repurpose on repeat over and over again yeah yeah and that's what that's... i've started to work towards now and i think that's going to be like the end game for me because yeah like threads is really fun i don't know if i want to do it forever if i can create a system where this sort of lead generation is working for me in my sleep so I can pull more of my time into just building up the online community off threads. That's right. going to be like the real unlock, I think. Yeah, that, that would be, that makes a lot of sense. That would be super powerful. Yeah. And even the, the micro scale version of that is just repurposing and tweaking some of the content that you've already posted after you've had a few reps. So for me, I posted this on July 1st, that Mr. Beast post. I will go and repost that like at the beginning of October, probably three months later. And I can say with almost like 99% certainty that it will do very well. And my like proof of concept for that is here is, so have a look at this post from Dan Co. Uh, posted it on August 8th. So just to have a quick peek, 25,000 impressions, 440 likes. So I did well. That was August 8th. And oh, actually, filter for likes. Oh, actually, it was from a while ago. That's a shame. Um, oh, okay. It was from, I posted the exact same thing and I, I can't get it up quickly to show you, but i just take my word for it. I posted the exact same thing in April, I, like the exact same post as this one. The only thing that was different was this part of the image. It wasn't, it was a different photo of this creator. It got basically the exact same reach, likes, comments, reposts, 
and saves and conversions into my community. Wow. The only yeah. thing I tweaked was the photo. So that's why that system works because people don't remember everything you post. The only one who remembers it is you. Like right. you're right. the one. And this is what I talk about with being a content uh, solicitor versus a content scientist. Like you look at your content objectively and realize that when you put so much effort into it, it's hard to not be emotionally attached to it yeah. because right. like, it's like your baby. But when you go and put it out there, try be objective and then go and repost it a few months later, people who have already seen it and they recognize that you've reposted it, if they're your people, they appreciate the reminder. And if they're not, chances are you've grown a little bit over the last two or three months. So everyone who's just started following you since then hasn't seen your best content yet. So you're actually doing them a disservice by not sharing it. For sure. Well, and the likelihood of your entire audience seeing everything you post. So even if somebody had been following you in April, you know, maybe maybe as much as 50% of your audience or, or more might not have even seen it. Or if they see it again, they get something new out of it because they're six months along the game further so it, exactly. would, it would retain its value for sure 100 percent, yeah and that's like, like this isn't just something that applies to threads this is any sort of social media platform um, reuse your best content this is something that i've just been doing more and more in the last month or two and it just creates so much leverage because after a few months you're going to revisit it and find ways to improve it and those little tweaks can often result in massive like improvements in reach, conversions, all the stuff that you're looking for to get out of social media. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's pretty cool. It's like a big game. It really is. Yeah. I, I gamify it like crazy so that I'm, I'm constantly like, seeing what little tweaks I can make or how I can update old content. I do that. I do that really frequently. Um, when you get that content to where you're like refurbishing it, are you going to just put it on autopilot? Or are you still going to kind of mix in some new, uh, how would you, <laughs> how would you balance that? Or are you just going to let it yeah. go and see how it, how it performs? In terms of, do you mean re reposting or repurposing the exact same post versus, yeah. versus trying to creating it? new or, or updating it? Yeah. Yeah. Not one or the other, like a bit of everything. So that's one way to do it where you literally just tweak maybe like an image or part of the image. The other part that I find myself changing the most is improving the hook. Like, and here is me borrowing proof, like we were talking about with that 3P framework of uh, proof, plan, promise. I heard a Mr. B's interview from a while ago, and he said that it had been a year between one interview he did with these guys and another. And in I think the first one was in 2022. And then the second one was last year, 2023. And over that year, Mr. B said like, gotten another 150 million subscribers or something just ridiculous. And he was asked, what's the biggest thing you've learned in the last year? And he said something to the effect of the hook is everything. And for him, it's like the first five to 30 seconds of a video, but for threads, it's the first few sentences. And for Facebook, it's the headline or it's the first few seconds of your reel, whatever. But like, if this is the basically the most talented creator on this planet and he's saying that the hook is everything, we should probably listen. <laughs> yeah. So that's sense. the thing that I'll go and tweak the most and put the most effort into because it's just, it's the most important part. Yeah, that's awesome. The, the yeah. hook is what will hook them. <laughs> Got to be better hookers. Yeah. Better, better hookers. <laughs> there you go. I feel uh, like there's a, yeah, there's, 
we're about to get cancelled um, <laughs> again yeah. again we're talking about fishing guys get your get your head out of the gutter um yeah i know that's been uh that's been awesome um i'm curious what's what's dan ko like he's he seems like a very serious character he does doesn't he based on that photo definitely but yeah um he's 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 a great creator yeah like yeah. learned a lot from yes. him and like yeah he's uh got 140 thousand newsletter subscribers like i think 1.5 million followers on instagram um definitely a big one on linkedin i'm not on linkedin so i wouldn't know as big as audience is and then recently he's just been going all in on youtube and about 700 thousand subscribers there so yeah the man's at the top of his game sure absolutely a bit of a beast. Um, i saw um marabou hopefully i'm pronouncing your name correctly but you you mentioned in the chat like you do this in Arc for analytics, yeah. So as you can see, I'm using Arc browser, but then the app itself that I've got my analytics up is metrical. Um, I think I got may as well just go and send my little affiliate link. Drop it, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. Um, there it is. Yeah. But the good thing is that you don't actually like there's a link to go and start but you don't even need to go and get a paid version to get all the analytics you see here you only get paid if you want to be able to see further than three months back but if you're like just starting out on threads like you don't need that so yeah like i honestly i don't see any reason not to just go and get metrical to just help your threads journey if you decide to start one Awesome. And does this, so this also connects to other social media profiles as well for analytics? Yeah, or? Wow. absolutely. So you can see on the sidebar here, it has everything you need. And wow. Yeah. And then you can go and schedule all of your content as well. Uh, and the cool thing is, which if I was on other platforms, I would be using. So let's say I want to go and create a post and this is like, Then I've got threads plus, and then I'll go connect it to X and then I'll go connect it to Facebook and then Instagram and then LinkedIn. Oh my gosh. No way. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, and then so I literally, this is also a content library as well. Like it pulls exactly. in all of your old posts too. So you can repurpose yes. them. <gasps> yes. Oh my God. I know. That is I know. amazing. Mind blown. So then wow, the you moment. Get content yeah. library plus analytics plus a, con a content scheduler all in right. one. What? I know. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> okay. So then you've you've connected it all. I've just written this one thing and then I hit either schedule or I post now and it will go and publish that one post to all the platforms I've connected simultaneously at once. Wow, this is the first time I've ever heard of this platform. Thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Now, Amazing. I because as I said, I've I'm only on threads. So I don't know whether you need to actually pay to go and sync them up and post simultaneously to all the other platforms. So oh. just bear that in mind. You might need to get the paid version in order to do that. I'm not sure, but at least you know the features there. Lennox, can I ask, one of the limitations I've found with uh, so many of these um, uh, pro, like softwares that conglomerate your social media is like, especially when it comes to X and, and threads is that you can't, you can't just keep typing it more automatically roll part of the thread onto the next one if you know what i mean do you know if it has that capability uh, i'm so glad you asked jamie really <laughs> oh giddy up there you go yep awesome and so that and just, then you just keep rolling with it keep rolling the best thing Whoa. is that, yeah <laughs> yeah i know what you mean marabu pretty cool the one of the most underrated things is that the is the post preview and this is getting a little bit intricate but it's worth mentioning as you can see here this is what the post will look like on threads and you need to put yourself in your audience's shoes to think what will this post look like on the feed because if it doesn't look good whether that's the way it's formatted or the way it reads 
quite frankly, just no one's going to actually go and read it. And then again, it's a waste. So what this app or like Metrical will give you, it is a post preview of what the it will look like on threads. And I'm assuming if you go and connect it to other platforms, it will give you options to toggle it on for um, like Instagram view and everything else. And it will give you the preview of what it looks like on mobile as well as desktop. So it's it's very powerful. And as you were pointing out, Jamie, you've got like multiple different sort of sub posts within the one. You can chop and change them and reorder them. You've got your character count there because on threads, you've got a 500 character limit per post or at least per like sub post. And you can also put in your media. So photos, videos, uh, what else? Other little formatting features. Yeah, very, very useful. <laughs> Okay. Cool. Yeah, and um, yeah, like the preview is, in my opinion, very underrated. I don't think enough uh, just content creators actually go and preview what their thing will look like from the perspective of the follower or the the reader or whatever. I, I got a, another question on that as well. This is <laughs> we're, we're kind of veering off topic a little bit here. <laughs> um, but with YouTube, the other one that I I've played around with a bunch of the similar things, to be honest. And um, the the one that gets me is that when you go to upload stuff to YouTube, you can't like they the the softwares don't allow you just to post the like the um, the text version of stuff. Like it has to you have to have a video, which sometimes I just want to use the community feature in YouTube just to to cross post from like threads over to YouTube if that makes sense. If that has that capability. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Well. YouTube channel? Maybe. Yeah. I'm, I'm not actually sure because I haven't played around with the community okay. feature, like posting in the community on YouTube, but the fact that you can actually connect a YouTube channel is promising. Yeah. I'm going to play around with it. No, no big deal. Um, yeah. Cool. Anyways, um, Lex, this has been amazing. I'm eternally grateful and I, I think i'm probably gonna have to watch some of this again just to get some of those nuggets uh out of this because it's been absolutely awesome um guys make sure you give linux a, a follow and jump into a school community and like all the stuff and buy all the stuff and all that type of stuff um <laughs> all the stuff yeah all the stuff but just want to say a massive thanks for being here thanks for uh giving all the gold nuggets to to everyone as well and on behalf of myself and everyone else yeah, I just want to say thanks, man. It's been been an absolute. Oh, I love this stuff, and I, I just love nerding out about the most like niche stuff on on the internet. And it's just uh, it's yeah, it's a real pleasure to be able to to share that with um, with with your people, and awesome. you all seem like really really nice people. And it's just awesome to be able to like just connect with you <laughs> because <laughs> uh, it's not easy to find those people in real life. And that's a beautiful thing about the internet. So yeah, really yeah. grateful for it, Jamie. And thank you everyone for coming along. Awesome stuff. Awesome. Guys, thank you very much, Linux. Massive, massive, massive thank you. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for coming. Great to, great to talk.